further cross you off my list. But when you come a knocking at my door, fate seems to give my heart a twist. I come running back for the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Thank you all. Ms. McGill, if you could call roll, please. Chair Wiscombe? Here. Longstreet? Here. Brown? Here. Clark? Here. Heaton? Here. And K. Spear and intern Rodriguez are not present. Okay, great. Thanks, Ms. McGill. Uh, Ms. Zachary, changes to the agenda? Uh, yes, Chair Wiscombe and Commissioners, I'd, I'd like to announce that uh, the item <clears throat> number uh, f five on your agenda has it been withdrawn by the applicant, so the Commission will not be considering the item, the proposal to rename the West Side Neighborhood Center today. I understand that, that the applicant um, is not interested in, in a future date, but is formally withdrawing it entirely from consideration. And Chair Wiscombe, uh, if I could recommend that the Commission uh, take the local coastal program update after the Street Tree Advisory Committee item and before the uh, Capital Improvement Program. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, okay, written communications. Um, do you have anything to report there, Ms. Zachary? Yeah. No? Okay. Uh, anyone here for public comment that uh, on an item that's not on the agenda? Okay. Uh, moving on then. Uh, Youth Council report. Um, intern Rodriguez is not present, and I don't. I don't believe he left a report for anyone. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we'll waive the Youth Council report for the month and just move on to Commissioner Committee assignment reports, and we'll just go down the row. Mr. Heaton. Thank you. Um, I did attend the Creeks uh, Restoration Work, um, the Creeks Advisory Meeting, and the item they discussed was the Capital Improvement Program. And uh, the staff did an excellent job of going over the, the projects in their program. It was very comprehensive, and, um, and the staff report is online. Great. Thank you very much. Ms. Longstreet? Um, I attended the Neighborhood Advisory Council this month. And the uh, committee received a report on the infrastructure needs in the city. Uh, it was a good report, and there was much discussion. Great. Thank you. Ms. Clark, do you have anything? No, the IPM committee nor the Front Country Trails Task Force, they didn't meet. Okay. Ms. Brill? Yes, I met with the uh, Golf Advisory Committee, and uh, they um, had quite a bit to report on, but um, playership is still down a little bit. Um, they're still reaching out to college students, trying to do a special uh, uh, fee for them. And uh, the Players Improvement Fund did a, a committee did a report, and they're working on a few projects, and they're just working on doing some stuff around the um, golf course to improve it. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, I attended the um, semi-annual uh, chair and vice chair meeting. Um, the chairs and vice chairs of the commissions get together uh, two, twice a year, and we kind of give an overview. So I gave an overview of what the Parks and Recreation Commission had done. And um, unlike some years past, all the commissions are quite busy. Um, have a lot of work, and, and um, including single family design board, which um, for a couple of years during the economic downturn had very little work. So, um, so it, was a, it was a very productive meeting. Uh, I also attended the regular Street Tree Advisory Committee meeting, and uh, we did a site visit of, of the item that's on your agenda today. And uh, the Park Foundation meeting, I attended that, uh, the board meeting. And uh, we do have, I just want to remind people, we have the 90th plus birthday party tomorrow. It's um, presented by Hub International. Um, the Park Foundation and the Parks and Rec Department are uh, sponsoring it. And um, it's for all community members who are 90 years and older. 
and they get a luncheon, birthday cake, and there'll be music played by Jazz Plus. So it's a great event, and it should be a lot of fun. And if there's anyone here that wants to work at it, I know Ms. Clark wants to come work at it, um, just let us know. I know we can use the help. So, um, And yesterday I had the pleasure of attending the Haley Street Youth Center celebration and ribbon cutting. And we, the commission had a report on that last, uh, last month, and it was quite the celebration. Lots of kids around, and uh, I got to uh, look around the facility, and they've got a full program going for during the week, and, it's, um, and they're responding to, to needs already, even though they just opened yesterday, um, including changing their hours. They were gonna do programs from one to 6 p.m., and some residents said, you know, we get off work at five, can you change that? So they've already changed their hours to two to 7 p.m., and they're gonna be adding some more uh, programs. So it was, it was really fun to see. It was a great celebration. So that's my report. Okay, we are going to move on to um, agenda item number one on the consent calendar, which is summary of council actions. That's in your packet. Uh, does anyone have any questions on that? It's, um, did you have anything to say, Ms. Zachary, on that? Uh, Chair Wiscombe, I was gonna uh, make a few comments under commission and staff communications, just give you a couple of Oh, quick I'm updates. sorry, I missed that, sorry. Don't mind. <laughs> Go backwards, sorry. <laughs> uh, just just briefly, since this is a fairly busy time, uh, like Chair Wiscombe mentioned that, that the committees and commissions are busy, while well, staff are fairly busy as well. Uh, and a couple of things that will be happening in November that you will be receiving information from staff. So I wanted to use t today's, today's meeting to um, give you some advance notice. Number one, we will be going to the City Council on November 4th for the status report on the Cabrillo Pavilion and Bathhouse project, and also a request that council, and in its role as a successor agency to the redevelopment agency, approve some additional uh, contracts for technical studies related to biological resources and archeological resources. The following week, we'll be going back with our geotechnical uh, uh, technical study uh, contracts, and that should essentially set us up to be able to complete all of the preliminary technical work that we need to do in order to submit our development application. Uh, on November 4th, too, we're hoping that we will be taking the construction contract for the pocket park. Uh, that's something that goes to the successor agency, city council, for approval as well. And assuming that that can move forward in that timeline, we anticipate we'll be breaking ground to initiate construction the following week. Uh, so we are trying to move it forward uh, uh, and, and get it complete as soon as possible. So, so that's exciting. Um, today we had our fourth uh, concept review at the Historic Landmarks Commission for the Cabrillo Pavilion and Bathhouse uh, project. And I did want to report to the commission that um, we received favorable comments on a number of key aspects of the project. And that includes um, maintaining uh, the terrace um, enclosed area of the upper story terrace um, through some some work that we've done on with our architects on the design um, enhancing the promenade uh, in order to provide improved pedestrian access and we also presented today and and, it, and we'll be working more on sort of the lighting study for for the building one of the one of the needs that we have there if anybody passes by at night is that it's quite dark and that we have floodlights really lighting the facility so we have safety considerations so part of the project will be to improve site lighting both from general safety and also we anticipate that the building will be open for longer hours uh, once it's renovated so we feel that we've made some significant progress um, through landmarks and have a, what's called an indefinite continuance, which gives us the ability to move forward and actually go to planning commission and come back for our additional design review um, at a future date. So um, that's um, an achievement that we were hoping to get to at some point soon. So we're glad that we're there. I have just one question. Um, on the, uh, when you go to city council on the 4th for the, for the uh, bathhouse and pavilion, um, do you also have to go back to the oversight board, too, or had they already allocated the funds 
and then and so this is the final step to transfer them to for the project. Uh, Chair Wiscombe and and commissioners, uh, not really. Uh, essentially, the the funding that that's been approved and about nine point one million is available. Um, what goes to the oversight board and to the state finance department is the spending plan, and that occurs every six months. So the spending plan really dictates our ability to spend the funds of the project, and we project how we think those funds will be spent. Um, the, the project itself will remain in sort of design, development review, permitting for quite some time, so we have adequate funding to get us through that process, and then we'll begin to hopefully um, in the next month or so start looking uh, preliminarily at cost estimates and moving forward with other aspects of the project related to the logistics of closing the facility, reopening the facility, fully funding, and you'll see in your capital program presentation later, and we can have more discussion at that point too, uh, what additional fundraising we might need to do, uh, secure additional funds to actually build the improvements that we need to build. Right. Okay. So the the reporting then to to the the state is is just done regularly and okay. Great. Okay. Thank you very much for that, Ms. Zachary. I'm sorry I missed that on on the agenda. Um, okay, so we're going to move on to the consent calendar now and you do have the um, Agenda item number one, which is the summary of council actions. Does anyone have any questions about that? It's related to the golf fund? No. Okay. So we'll move on to um, item number two. And we have A and B. We, since we have two sets of minutes, uh, one from the uh, regular monthly meeting on September 24th and one from the um, special meeting that we had, uh, which was basically a, a tour of some of the parks, and that was on Saturday, October 11th. Um, unless we have, unless there's objections, uh, we could take them together if that's... I would make yeah. a motion that we accept the minutes of September 24th and October 11th. Okay, we have a motion and a second, and any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that passes unanimously. Uh, great. Okay. I wasn't present at the second meeting. You so. can still. You can still. Okay. You can still. Yeah. And you did vote. You. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can still vote. You just can't make a motion, <coughs> but you can vote. Yeah. Okay. Um, so now we're going to move on to Street Tree Advisory Committee items. This is agenda item number three A, one, which is thirteen thirty Chapala Street. Mr. Downey, welcome. Chair Wiscombe and Commissioners, 1330 Chapala Street is adjacent to uh, a development project to, uh, for housing and uh, improvements to the parking lot behind the Arlington at the corner of Sola and Chapala Street. Um, the applicant um, is trying to spruce up the area for those uh, future residents and um, uh, desires to remove the street trees that are in poor condition and replace them with trees that will uh, be, uh, become better looking trees and, and uh, so that's the desire for the project. They um, submitted their information to the Street Tree Advisory Committee. Um, at that meeting their plans had shown uh, replacement with uh, six Colrotaria trees. Um, at that meeting, they uh, agreed to change out the replacement species to match the, uh, the public market project, which is adjacent to that, so there'd be matching trees for that. Um, their proposal to remove these five um, trees that haven't performed so well and replace with six um, Brazilian cigar, cigar box trees. The committee uh, evaluated that, did a site visit, um, they concurred with the proposal. Their recommendation is to approve uh, on the condition that the trees are replaced with uh, Brazilian cigar box trees. Um, a little note about the timing of the project. The uh, project goes back to Historic Landmarks Commission for final on November 11th. Um, and uh, 
with construction and whatnot, the landscaping would be the last part of that construction. It's anticipated that uh, the street trees, if, if approved, would be replaced at the end of that project, uh, likely after the drought declaration is, is removed. Uh, so with that, the committee recommends to approve on the condition uh, that uh, the trees are replaced with six Brazilian cigar box trees. Um, the landscape architect is here if you have questions for the project. Uh, so uh, the committee recommends approval on the condition replaced with six uh, Brazilian cigar box trees. Um, can I ask a question? Yes, uh, Ms. Longstreet. Um, as far as <clears throat> timing goes, uh, do the trees have to come out now, or can the trees, uh, can we condition it that the trees don't come out until construction starts? I hate it when we denude a block, a project gets delayed, and suddenly we're, even if they're not performing well, we're with no trees for three, five, lower State Street, we could have been without them for 10 years, so. Chair Wiscombe, Commissioner Longstreet, um, I don't know of a reason that the project would be delayed if, if the trees remain until the time that they're ready to make those improvements at the end of the project and less, uh, Ms. I'll just address that quickly. Um, the trees that are existing. Would you just, um, Courtney, Courtney you Jane just, Miller yeah, with uh, CJMLA. Yeah. Uh, the trees that are existing today, as you can see by the photo, are I wouldn't even consider them trees. The, the the closest one in the photo is the largest specimen. The rest are you know max four or five foot tall, so they're really more of a visual deterrent than anything else. But we don't plan to remove them until we are into construction. So. Thank you. Yeah, it just, we, we've seen it happen a couple of times where the rush to take the trees out and then for financing reasons, whatever reasons happen in the big scheme of development, we're stuck without. And so even when they're somewhat pathetic, <laughs> they are green. <laughs> Understood. Better than blank parkway. <laughs> Understood. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Appreciate it. Um, anyone else have any questions? Yes, Mr. Heaton. And just to clarify, um, would those be, I think in the letter it said 24-inch box. Maybe you said that in your presentation, but it wasn't in the, um, in the recommendation. So would, would that be part of it? Uh, Chair Wiscombe and Commissioner Heaton, the uh, committee's proposal was uh, as, as proposed, and I don't recall if it was proposed for a 15-gallon or 24-inch box. Ms. Miller? Do you they are 24-inch box. And it is the quantity is six, right? We're, we're ta removing five and replacing with six. Okay. Um, any other questions? Okay. Uh, any discussion or anyone want to make a motion? I'll move um, that we accept the, the recommendation to approve the removal of the five trees on the condition that the replacement trees the Cedra facilis, correct? Um, Brazilian cedar wood, and uh, just clarify that would be replacing with six 24 inch box. Second. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that carries unanimously. Thank you very much, and thank you for coming, Ms. Miller. Appreciate it. Okay, now we're going to move on to agenda item number six, which is the local coastal program update. Chair Wiscombe and commissioners, uh, Liz Limon from the Community Development Department uh, is planning to be here for this item. I uh, mistakenly estimated the time to be 4.30. Uh, I would be happy to introduce the item and as she comes in, um, if there are any further questions, if the commission would prefer that rather than starting the capital program and stopping and starting anticipate right. she'll be here momentarily yeah i i think you could give you could give the commission a um a very good background for for that miss zachary <laughs> if you don't mind i do not mind chair with some commissioners um the city has a local coastal program we're required to under the california coastal act um it is 
It was last developed in 1980, so it's now 2014. Um, there have been amendments over time. Uh, however, um, the city's in a position to undertake a comprehensive update of the program for a couple of reasons. Number one, the Community Development Department received a grant um, to help support the staff time associated with doing the work. It is focused on the city's coastal zone, and so the city has a very specific coastal zone boundary that's been established. Uh, when Ms. Limon gets here, she'll have a, a map for you to see, and it varies um, as you go from east to west along the city. In some areas, it extends inland in, in some areas more than others. So, for example, the entire bird refuge is in the coastal zone, but then the coastal zone gets closer to the coast as you leave the bird refuge, and then it goes in, for example, if you go all the way out to the Mesa, there are large portions of the Mesa neighborhood that are in the coastal zone. Um, the zone itself has sort of two areas, um, one that's sort of within local decision making, and then one, and then the other area which requires approval if we needed a coastal development permit for any project within the coastal zone, which requires a secondary permit from the coastal commission itself. So for example, uh, the bird refuge vegetation management project that we um, got a five-year permit for three years ago, so we've got two years left on it, required both city approval and coastal commission approval. The Cabrillo Pavilion and Bathhouse renovation projects, not in the original jurisdiction, so it can be approved at the city level, but it can be appealed to the coastal commission. So there's a variety of nuances. Um, from the Parks and Recreation Commission standpoint, uh, the city owns a lot of land in the coastal area, and, we, and most of it is in Parks and Recreation. So, so your involvement in the update is, would be very much focused on policies and considerations as they relate to Parks and Recreation issues, um, whether it has to do with visual resources, whether it has to do with water quality, whether it has to do with public access and recreation, uh, there are different sections of the of the program that are in the process of being updated, and here's Ms. Limon to jump in. Um, it's okay. We we got ahead of the agenda, yeah. so I'm doing a little background. But I think what I'd like to do is is turn it over um, to Liz, and she'll maybe repeat a few things I've said, and mm -hmm. probably give you a little bit more that's comprehensive. Great. Welcome. <laughs> Good afternoon, Chair Wiscombe and Parks and Recreation. Uh, commissioners, I'm Liz Limon, and I work in the planning division of the Community Development Department in the Long Range Planning section. And one of our major work efforts over the next couple years is updating our city's local coastal program. And I have maps for you um, that show the area of the city that is in the coastal zone. Um, and it's basically all of the waterfront area of the city from the city limits in Hope Ranch all the way out to the edge of um, Coast Village Road. And um, this map is one example of the types of digital updated maps we're hoping to incorporate into our new local coastal program. The original local coastal program, or LCP, was adopted and certified by the Coastal Commission in the early 1980s. And the local coastal program is comprised of the policy document, which is our essentially our general plan for this coastal zone area, um, which is called the land use plan. Um, so the local coastal program is the umbrella document that the policy document is the land use plan, and then the, the implementation plan is the zoning development guidelines, standards, and regulations. Right now, we're just looking at updating the 19... 80s circa um, land use plan and policies. Um, and uh, some of the topics I think Jill was, was talking about, right, as I was walking in, some of the topics that are covered and required to be covered by the Coastal Act um, have to do with land use and development, visitor serving type development, balancing the needs for that with coastal dependent and harbor area uses, um, environmentally sensitive habitat areas, water quality, very, very long list, and coastal access and rec recreation are right on the top of coastal act priority type uses. Um, so it's going to be a, a very um, interesting and challenging um, project to, to work on. And um, last year, the city received grant funding that actually uh, was enabled us to get started on this. Um, 
It was a grant from the uh, California State Coastal Commission to update this, our land use plan um, by April 2016 is when our due date is to submit um, amendment to our coastal plan to the Coastal Commission. Um, and it's not only going to address our land use plan, but it's also going to address uh, sea level rise and coastal adaptation issues in the harbor and waterfront areas. Um, John Ledbetter has been working with this uh, group of um, Bren students out at UCSB, and they're taking the um, GRIG study that was done, the initial sort of identifying um, coastal adaptation issues for us and sea level rise, and they're taking a closer look and identifying um, critical infrastructure, critical populations, um, uh, environmentally sensitive areas that will be affected. And that work isn't going to be completed until the summer of 2015, and that's when uh, we hope to be going out and doing a series of public workshops on the updated plan and the co coastal adaptation um, issues. We're uh, working closely wa with waterfront staff to incorporate the adopted and certified harbor master plan document into the new land use plan right now. As you know, it's a freestanding separate certified coastal document, so we're hoping to merge them in this new document. They also have designated a, a subcommittee that are, that, um, are going to work on this update. Don't have the names of the people with me right now. Um, also, the Planning Commission has designated a subcommittee of, of June Pujol, who I believe is your liaison, Addison Thompson, and Deborah Schwartz, the chair. And we're having our first sort of kickoff initiation meeting with them this coming Monday in the afternoon. And we're hoping that if we could get a Parks and Recreation subcommittee designated today, that in the next couple of weeks we could have a quick meeting sort of kickoff so we could describe for the subcommittee what we have done to date and give you a little bit more detail about where we're going. And then we hope in, by mid-November, well, early in November, we would get a few sections out that we have already drafted to the subcommittee, and we could have our first working meeting with the committee, ideally in mid-November sometime. We'd get a work product out to you a couple weeks in advance, and then we could have a working meeting where we could get your input. And we feel like the subcommittee would also be a good sounding board for us to um, identify the issues that are emerging and of interest and to help us wrestle the beast and move it forward in the public process with the um, Parks and Recreation, Harbor Commission, Planning Commission, and I'm sure eventually Creeks will also be um, very interested. So we're at the beginning of the work program, but it would be very um, beneficial for us to have a Parks and Recreation um, subcommittee. As you can see from the map, it is a um, great extent of your work, although you have parks throughout the city, but a lot of interest in this. And we've been working closely with Jill and Cameron and staff throughout the city. Great. And how you would you like to have, what, like three commissioners on it or on the subcommittee? Is that? If it's possible, I think that would be great in the event schedule conflicts. I mean, it, it wouldn't be a Brown Act committee, um, but I think three would be great. So we're looking at the holidays and other crunch times of years. You know, if only two people can can turn out, I think it would be a, better than having two and only being able to work with one. Right. I mean, because there will be times probably when someone can't, couldn't make it or some, Yes. Yeah. So, um, and then um, the number of meetings for the subcommittee, do you have any, can you give, can you give the commission members <coughs> a, a, some sort of, how much time and yeah, at this point, it's it's hard to say. Our, John right. Ledbetter, the manager, his best guess is that we would have, um, starting with mid-November, he's guessing a series of three working meetings where we would get um, work product out to the committee, draft sections or, or chapters, and then meet to review comments. Um, he's He thinks there is a series of three with the first one in mid-November and then something early next year and probably next spring. I I would like to offer a range of that, that being a best case scenario. And then if we start digging in and we have our first working meeting and more questions come up and more information is needed or input from other, other people, I think it might be more than just three meetings. But yeah, that's I, his best guess at this okay. point in time. So there should be some flexibility. I know when we did the urban forest management plan, there were more meetings than anticipated. But I think the process was, was great and I think the meetings were very fruitful. So... Um, but okay. Um, so, 
uh, the will the will the committee be the subcommittee be um, will you be able to be flexible because we have people you know on the commission everyone here works except for me but um, you know <laughs> well I am retired you yeah I, I don't get paid for it yeah <laughs> um, so will will there be some flexibility as to you know when you meet et cetera to accommodate people's work schedules Absolutely. Okay. It's, it's just staff at this point, so if there's lunch or evening, um, whatever works for the subcommittee, we, you would be helping us. So we would bend over backwards to be there for whenever you needed okay. to have the meetings be. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be set in advance that Monday nights every few months or something. It could be, I think we would probably reschedule them as needed, and it would be based on your schedules at that time. Okay. Well, it sounds like a very exciting um, uh, update to work on. It really does, considering it's been so long. So, Ms. Zachary, did you have something to add? Just, Chair Wiscom, I know um, this, is, this is a pretty big endeavor, so I don't want to underestimate um, your role if you're on the subcommittee. It's also uh, it's a unique opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's work, but it's a unique opportunity, and Santa Barbara is what it is today because people have protected our coast. And part of the objective with um, our coastal program is to do just that and continue to make it sure that it serves the community. So it's got a unique element to it. Uh, I know that uh, planning staff are eager to pull the subcommittees together and get the kickoff going so that you're ready for then your first working meeting. And ideally, they would start with a meeting next week, which is r rather close, but thought it, we'd throw it out there if it's even feasible for anybody that might be interested, um, or it could be the subsequent week. So it's, an, it's a work effort that starts now, not in a month. So I <laughs> wanted, to be, wanted right. to be sure that you, that you understood that, and if, if that affected, if you had constraints associated with that, that that's something that you could take into consideration or communicate back to us mm -hmm. so that there could be some flexibility to figure out how to make it work for you as well. Yeah, um, and if I could just add that first initial kickoff meeting would be just attending the meeting and, uh, and doing sort of initiation with staff. There wouldn't be a work product in advance um, that we would turn out, but the next one would be something we'd give you um, draft chapters in advance and try to give you enough time um, to review and come prepared for the meetings. Yeah, so there's there's more to it than just meeting. Uh, there's there's homework to do. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. And and yeah. So okay. So I'm. Um, thank you for that. That's that's it's really exciting. Uh, would any commissioners here uh, enjoy being on that subcommittee based on? Um, Okay, Ms. Brown and Wesley, I would. Okay, and I, I think you're probably a little worried about the time commitment. The, you? Yeah, um, but I'm also willing to participate in it. Um, so, well, I'm I'm willing to participate if if you think that the commitment might be, you know, based on your work schedule, might be too much. But that, I'm going to leave that up to you. Chair Wiscombe? Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry to jump in, but also to clarify. Um, the, the, the full commission will also be weighing right. in on the coastal yeah. program. So if you're not on the subcommittee, yeah. it's not like it's this major mix, missed opportunity. It's really uh, the, sub, the role of the subcommittee is to help move it forward so that when it comes to the commission, some of you are more familiar with right. its direction and, and that the, the work effort of the full commission can be as productive as possible because, again, you know, the commission itself probably doesn't want to have multiple, multiple meetings, so that's part of it. So you wouldn't be precluded from participating if you couldn't um, attend on the subcommittee, attend the subcommittee. Okay, yeah. So, so do you, Mr. Heaton, do you want to do it, or do you, would you prefer me to do, be the third? It's up to you. You can be the third. Okay, okay. <laughs> Okay. I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but I, I could tell by your face you were like, uh, I'd really like to, but uh, yeah. So, okay. So um, it will be, it'll be um, Nicole Clark, Carolyn Brown, and me that will be your subcommittee. 
Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. Very much. Well, thank you for coming, and we're, we look forward to it. Yeah, and, and uh, Chair Wiscombe, we we Parks and Recreation staff will help coordinate scheduling of the meetings, and we'll be part of those meetings as well. So, um, you'll be getting requests from us, but it'll be for on behalf of the planning staff. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. You're thank welcome. You, Ms. Thank you. Bone. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, takes care of. Uh, agenda item number six, and we are going back now to agenda item number four, which is the proposed uh, fiscal year 2016 to 2021 capital improvement program. And this is actually, um, this is the meeting where we make a recommendation that goes to, gets forwarded to both the Planning Commission and the City Council on the um, six-year capital improvement program. And we had a preview of that last month. So I think, you know, we're, we're good to go. Um, okay, Ms. Zachary. Chair Wisco and Commissioners, uh, I will be doing um, the presentation. Uh, however, I do have Rich Hanna and Santos Escobar here. Um, since they're engaged in maintenance and care and, and uh, management of our facilities so that if there are more questions that they can answer, um, that they're here to provide that. Uh, the commission had a presentation, as you said, last month and then subsequently did a site visit uh, a few weeks ago. I wanted to briefly sort of remind ourselves of what the purpose of the capital program is, some of the key considerations we talked about at your last meeting. The focus of tonight will be more on what we're proposing for 2016, 2017, but your staff report and its attachments really give you a sense of the breadth of what we're looking at. Uh, so we won't be going through every single project. However, if you have questions or comments uh, on any of the ones that um, we don't go in specificity, that's part of today's meeting as well because we are asking the commission to both give us your priorities for the next two-year budget cycle, so that would be starting July 1 of 2015, and then also looking at the whole program, you know, what your general recommendations are. That's something that will be forwarded to the Planning Commission and the City Council. And then you'll have another opportunity when we consider our two-year budget proposal to hone in on, on those priorities again and another opportunity to voice those priorities um, to Council as they adopt the budget because that's where the money will actually get um, assigned to whatever projects that we work on. So just briefly, the capital improvement program is required by the city's charter. It gives the city the opportunity to establish a comprehensive list of planned and projected capital needs. The purpose of the program is we really need to look at what our design, permitting, and construction timelines are. It is general. It gets more specific as we get closer to actually moving forward with projects. Similarly, project costs and funding sources. We do, it, we do a, a, an initial attempt to determine is that something the general fund might support or is it something that, um, or is that something we might seek grant funding for? Other departments that are enterprise funds have different sources of funds for their projects, um, and we also use the opportunity to prioritize projects um, in two-year segments. <clears throat> so, at your last meeting, we talked about some of the key considerations for parks and recreation in the city in general. Uh, number one potential for increased funding as the economy has improved, uh, revenues have been improved, and the city is also looking at what it really needs over the long term and whether we should be looking for other secure sources for funding. At the same time, we recognize that a potential of that increased funding needs to continue to go to our unmet needs, whether it's maintenance or safety, uh, protecting our resources, and then, and then continuing to address community demand. We talked uh, in, in some detail about planning for the future. We're in a unique opportunity, uh, unlike 2007, 2008, where we were downsizing, of revisiting where we want to be, not just tomorrow and in two years, but in the next 30 years. Uh, some of the ideas and, and concepts that, that we talked about at the last meeting and believe are important is continuing to enhance what we already do. There's things that have been deferred, as I mentioned. We are a city that has a wealth of heritage 
and resources and being able to preserve and protect those. Anticipating recreation trends. Uh, we constantly have lots of different interest groups or we read or we go out and about and we see what other communities are doing and there are new trends out there whether it has to do with changing demographics, the different ways people recreate. Um, it has evolved over time. You, one can look at the, the bathhouse and say, well, at one point there was a saltwater wading pool there. Well, by 1979, that was not something that was so popular. And of course, there were regulatory issues associated with, with that operation. So we couldn't operate that pool in that location. So things are constantly evolving. Um, for the next six-year CIP, um, as you have in your packet, we have 38 projects for general funds. So today's presentation is focused on that. We're not covering the Gulf Fund. We're not covering the Creeks Fund. You'll, the commission will get that information um, at a future date. Uh, and that total we have at about $114 million. When we did this two years ago, it was quite a bit less, and, and in all honesty, it's probably quite a bit more, but it's very difficult to project in six years everything that might be needed. We have some fairly significant capital needs, so some of those things, those numbers are really just placeholders. It's the concept that's important. Would it or wouldn't it take $10 million to build a new facility? We don't really know because we don't have the details for the facility, but we know perhaps that's somewhere we might go in the future. For the next two years, um, we've put together an ambitious program. We're proposing 20 projects. Uh, and our funding request, as it's currently drafted in the CIP, um, it doesn't really become real until council approves the budget in June. Uh, but it does give a sense of what we think we would want. It's just under $2 million for 2016 and 6.6 .6 million, just over 6.6 .6 million for 2017. I'd point out that, and you'll have this in more detail in the presentation, a good chunk of that is the Cabrillo Pavilion and Bathhouse. And these numbers don't differentiate between general fund sources and other sources. So in some cases, it assumes that there will be some outside source of funding, whether, for example, the bird refuge, it would be from Measure B, or whether it would be from community fundraising or a grant. And as the commission knows, we, whenever possible, find ways to leverage our resources with grant resources. And they've come and gone and sort of ebbed and flowed over time. Uh, it's not clear what might be out there in the near future, but opportunities do come up and we, we pursue them. Even if it's already identified in our capital program, we always look for ways to supplement the funding that we have. The projects that we're proposing for the next two years really are based on whether we think they're feasible, what we think the cost is, what the need is, and then also whether it's something we're, we're currently doing and we want to keep doing, for example, playground replacements or restroom renovations, those things that this sort of the bread and the butter, the nuts and the bolts, you can't stop doing those things. Whether it's an existing project and really we just want to supplement the funding and keep it moving forward and perhaps complete it in the next two years. And in some cases, we've, we're proposing some new initiatives. Those initiatives are based on what we heard from the commission last month, um, ideas and suggestions that you wanted to pursue, community interests that we have, uh, and then also things that we're seeing at the staff level since we're implementing programs and, and are seeing a, a need. What I will add is what's not in here, and we reviewed it last month, is we still have projects we're still going to be doing in the next two years. So, for example, you don't see the Cabrillo ball field renovation project in here because we're not asking for any more money. It's already in our capital program. So it's a planning document. And then there's sort of what our operations are. Um, there are other projects that are also, that we're working on as part of um, Kids World, for example, renovation. It's already in our cap, so you don't see it here, but we're working on it. So keep that in mind, because I, I, I can say that, that if we were successful in securing all of these funds, or a good portion of them, we would need additional resources, staff resources, to actually implement them. We're sort of at our max right now. Um, but as projects get finished, we can add new ones to the plate. And so we have thought about that. <clears throat> so I'm going to walk through them and describe the ones that we're proposing for the next two years. Number one is uh, Alameda Plaza renovation. Alameda Plaza has two quadrants, east and west. It's one of the city's oldest parks. Um, we focused in recent years on trying to secure funding just to renovate the gazebo. Uh, in looking at the park itself and different issues that we have over time, we really like to turn it into a much larger project. Address the walkways, replace the walkways, 
uh, look at access issues in all of our parks and recreation facilities. Whenever we do a renovation or an improvement project, we're bringing it up to today's ADA standards. This is a key part where we could certainly do that. And we have areas of lighting and signage and picnic areas that could use pretty good facelift. So our proposal um, for the first two years is number one in, in fiscal year 16, you know, some money to do the conceptual design, whatever level engineering drawings we might need. For example, if we were to use, put in permeable paver sidewalks or walkways, that kind of thing, there is design work. And that we would start implementing improvements over a series of years. We're sort of showing that the total project cost might be around a million, but we'd actually do improvements, a portion of improvements every year, rather than trying to fund it all at once. Um, it's, it's a project that would lend itself well to that. Alice Keck Park Memorial Garden, we ask for funding for this park every single year. It's another one of the city's gems. It's, it's loved by many, many people. Um, Santos Escobar has done a fantastic job finding ways to rejuvenate um, areas of landscape on a case-by-case, -case, uh, piecemeal basis. We have some infrastructure that really does need upgrading. Um, walkways, the pond, the pond pumps, the bridges, you know, and again, we also have access issues and signage issues, so it's kind of time to take a look at it. In fiscal year 17, so we're opposing this in, second, in the second year, we would, we would do a, a comprehensive sort of renovation plan for the garden and then go through the design review and whatever uh, design review permitting we would be required, and then again, looking for implementation. This is a project that we would be seeking outside funding for as well. Andre Kark Bird Refuge, I won't go into it um, in great detail. We've been talking about addressing water quality and habitat in this location since the city's owned it. I look at the plan from 1924 and all the issues that we had then we have today. Uh, it's been a project that's been um, moving towards being funded and implemented at the Creeks Division level because really that's an appropriate place. It, it would be a wetland restoration Right now, we're managing it from a public access, public safety, um, flooding standpoint, but we do need to come up with some long-term solutions um, to, to really try to get to a, a better way to manage it environmentally, but then also so that it, it meets the needs of the community. Um, it meets the needs of the bird population really well. It does provide excellent wildlife habitat, so it is successful in that, in that respect. Uh, artificial sport field development. This is something the commission talked about on your site visit. You know, we've identified four locations where we could look at the feasibility. Uh, City Council allocated some money to look at Bonnet Park as an initial um, location for this year. We would propose expanding that to really look more carefully at Dwight Murphy Ball Field and perhaps Pershing Ball Field. Uh, the number, sort of the total implementation number, again, this is our ballpark range. We really don't know. Um, there are a lot of issues associated with, with moving in this direction. There's certainly, you know, there's the recreation benefits, but then there's the management considerations that we need to better understand what, what we're getting ourselves into, and then also just the capital, ongoing capital funding required to maintain um, artificial sports fields. However, we keep coming back to it as a need for a community. So we, in the next two years, I think we really need to roll up our sleeves and figure out what's the feasibility and what would it cost and what are the design issues. Um, Dwight Murphy, as an example, is in a floodplain, so there's some complications there. I mean, there's, there's definitely some constraints. Cabrillo Pavilion and Bathhouse, the commission has been um, aware of that. We've been working on it. The city council um, approved... <clears throat> The funding in, at the end of the calendar year, fiscal year 20, uh, sorry, at the end of the calendar year of 2013, uh, and we're working towards moving that forward. Uh, we've put in sort of a placeholder of $3 million for fiscal year 17. <clears throat> Again, it's still conceptual since we have a long way to go with our permitting. And we have always talked about that there would be a role for community fundraising in this project. It's still yet to be defined. So right now, I think the, the way we're showing it in capital is perhaps half of that $3 million would come from outside sources, and maybe the city would then contribute the other half. Cabrillo Ballroom Air Conditioning. Uh, the Cabrillo uh, Recreation, Cabrillo Rec Ballroom, I should say, center got a wonderful facelift with RDA funds uh, a number of years ago. 
Uh, one of the things that wasn't done is they didn't include air conditioning for the ballroom, uh, which makes it challenging to use on really warm days, and it gets quite uncomfortable in there. We've asked for this funding for a number of years in a row, have not been successful, and we feel that we need to keep asking for it and prioritize it for next year because it will enhance and expand the facility use, and, and it is a source for revenue generation for the department. So there is a value above and beyond uh, just this one location. Carrillo Gym Renovation, uh, this facility is right next to uh, the Carrillo Recreation Center. It is another one of the city's designated structure of merit, so as you can imagine, it's got some challenges in terms of what you could do to the exterior. It has a rooftop uh, basketball court that's closed because we don't have a secondary access. Uh, so one of our key objectives would be to figure out how to do that within the existing footprint of the building and at the same time renovate the interiors, um, ad address uh, structural seismic building systems issues, uh, really take this on. It's, again, one of those assets like the Cabrillo Pavilion and Bathhouse that probably has some pretty neat potential and it's time to perhaps put some resources towards figuring out what we can do. We're proposing to initiate a feasibility assessment in the second year. Why? Because we would have already a lot of other things on our plate in the first year. The commission, if, if the commission felt this was more of a priority than another project, you could say, hey, let's propose we start that next year. In all reality, we'll be still you know, up to our neck in dealing with the pavilion and bathhouse, so I'm not sure how realistic that would be. We've created a placeholder of $5.5 million, only based on everything else that we're learning and maybe by the time we got there we would know and you know it may be a little high um, but it's kind of a sense of this is not a small project this is a bigger project. Chase Palm Park renovation this is a wonderful park it was opened in in 19 I always do this I was 1998 which is surprising and you might say why do they have that in their capital program well we have some design components that aren't working things that we need to address in terms of walkways and public access we have infrastructure that is being challenged by the location in the coastal environment we've invested a lot of money in this park recently all the lighting's been replaced uh, we replaced the playground, and so it's wonderful. Uh, but we have areas that are currently unused or poorly used, including we actually have a little snack bar that's completely unused, and it needs a complete upgrade because it doesn't meet today's health code. Ways for us to look at, again, enhancing the park, you know, continuing it for another 20 years, opportunities to generate revenue, um, and our proposal is to begin really scoping that in the first year and then moving forward with implementation in the second year. This is the type of project that we have a lot of experience moving forward with, so don't anticipate it would be super complicated and we could get it done. Medium Parkway Landscape Renovation, Santos uh, Escobar took on managing all the medians and parkways in the city that the city manages, not all of them, but the ones we... Uh, and one of the issues that's been pre present for many, many, many years is that some of the designs and some of the plant material is old. It's not really appropriate for the location. Considering we're in the drought, you know, the amount of actual re-landscaping we would do in the short term is likely to be limited, but we need to actually develop some design standards and get them approved at the design review level so that, when we, that it prepares us to move forward with upgrading um, these landscapes sometime into the future. Capital program proposes putting money in there every single year. Why? We've got 14 acres, 230 areas, anywhere from Garden Street to Carrillo to State Street to all these little pockets and islands all over the city. Municipal tennis facility, uh, as the commission knows, we have 25,000 to do a new playground design and, and go through permitting. And maybe if I could have, uh, I think you could use the mouse because I don't think this will, oh, no, this will work but City TV won't like it. Okay, this is the location for the potential new playground, which we're working on. But we really, in a, in a perfect world, would take a whole look at this facility and say, is it time to upgrade and renovate the stadium or turn it into another recreation-type facility? Again, sort of meeting the future needs. Uh, we're proposing 100000 for the first year, which could either go towards constructing the playground or could go towards, for example, initiating a feasibility assessment. Off-leash dog areas, this is a discussion that the commission had at your last meeting. 
Uh, and I mentioned that we have at the staff level, we're beginning a preliminary look at our existing resources and we'll, we'll be coming back to you um, February or March with a matrix of what our resources are and, and how these different parks are used and a, a sort of initial broad brush of you know, potential locations. Uh, we are proposing um, beginning to fund it. And you might say, well, if you're doing that study this year, why do you need more money? It's like, well, we'd actually have to do both the public outreach and then the design and permitting and construction, which could be very, very simple in some locations and not so simple in other locations, depending on, on what we're trying to achieve. So uh, we're proposing that for the second year. Again, we're proposing it because in all reality, from a staff workload standpoint, to begin that design permitting work in the second year is probably more realistic. It would not preclude us from initiating the public discussion in the first year because we don't need funding to do that. We can do that with staff resources. So if we initiate it and continue it, hopefully by 17, we have a clear idea of where those locations might be and we can roll up our sleeves and start the design work. <clears throat> Anticipate that there will be a lot of public dis discussion depending on the locations that appear most feasible. Or take a park pool renovation. You know, we've had this project sort of out there in outer years and sort of decided with this two-year plan, let's put it up front and center because we know it's a need. We know it's a need for the east side neighborhood. We know as the years pass by, it's going to be more and more and more and more difficult to operate the pool without major upgrades. Uh, and it's a, the park is in a great location to serve the east side. So again, similar concept. Um, upgrade and expanding the pool, developing a splash play area, and looking at we just need to get our hands around what's really feasible and realistic in sort of the first year of funding. And if we really um, were to invest a lot in the park, it could be an expensive project. We've spent, I think, on the order of $2 million already in that park on playing fields, on the basketball court, on the Ortega Welcome House renovation, on the playground. It doesn't take long to start adding up, as you can imagine. <clears throat> park Infrastructure Safety Program, this is an example of one that we initiated two years ago, and we, we ask for and have just sort of in the program a, a proposal for $100,000 every year. The improvements at Willow Glen that the commission um, experienced on your site visit were funded out of this program, and that's something that the city that the department would direct in terms of, well, this is the park we want to do the, we want to do the improvements in. We, that would be our opportunity to sort of prioritize and then report to the commission what we would be doing. Park irrigation uh, renovation. Most of our irrigation systems are over 30 years old. We successfully installed the first irrigation subsurface at Ambassador Park this year. Um, we also did replace Willow Glen, but we have some ball fields that could use new irrigation. And the advantage of that is, A, it'll save water. So in times of drought, there's an advantage there. And two, it'll, it'll help us maintain the field in a manner that makes it safe and playable and more enjoyable. So those are the reasons, not just because we want to do it, uh, but really it, it'll enhance our ability to operate and maintain those fields. Chase uh, Park Restroom Renovation Program, we were on a good roll for a while. We had grant funding and RDA funding, and we were doing a number of restrooms. Uh, the Chase Palm Park Restroom, which is actually original to the park, so 1930s, if you can imagine, uh, needs a facelift. It, I, you can go in and use it. It's, it's functional. Um, the facilities uh, division is actually replacing the roof this year, so that's getting taken care of. Uh, and uh, we would be proposing doing an interior model and, and bringing it up to these ADA standards, and that would be the first year of funding. And then tackling either Mackenzie Park or La Mesa Park or potentially doing both of them, interior restroom renovations. We have money in every single year because we have restrooms in a number of our parks. Uh, master plan, the commission had some discussion uh, at the last meeting. Why, why we'd want a master plan really could be a fantastic guiding, guiding document for the next 30 years. And that's where it goes into, if you look at a number of the other projects that are proposed, a north side recreation center, a central city recreation center, sort of bigger picture, a new skate park. The master plan would help really refine and identify where, how, when, and for who um, we would pursue those, um, establish the vision, our priorities, guide future decision making. Right now, we look at what we have and what we think we need and what we know we need, and then we sort of cobble it together 
this would be a great way to package it so that we could always go back and say, that's what our master plan has directed us to move forward with. And shouldn't this dovetail nicely with the local coastal plan so that there's some of that information that'll help guide a parks and recreation master plan? Chair Wiscombe and Commissioner Longstreet, yes, and it actually would also help implement the city's general plan. So, um, but at the same time, it would also be our working document. We don't want it just to be the plan with the policies and the ideas on the shelf, but actually we can turn it into something that we actually work on, similar to the urban forest management plan. It's not this thing we put on the shelf. We like, oh no, now this is something we have on our desk because we can use it every day. Uh, and we have one, it's just dated and needs to be updated. Uh, so we've proposed funding that we believe would help us do some of the preliminary studies and then also support some of the staff to, to actually work on it. So these are sort of special projects and so looking at assigning individuals to work on that, we don't have the sort of staff resources just to sort of assign everybody new things. You have to sort of say, well, we have a special project, we could bring in this staff resource for that project. Parking lot maintenance, not a very exciting project or program, but it's something that we struggle with. Uh, occasionally, Santos is successful in tying in a slurry seal with a street slurry seal and, and works closely with our public works department. And we try to you know, maximize resources and leverage opportunities, but there's some that just never get done. And uh, the one adjacent to Career Recreation, right in front of um, the gym, is in terrible condition. Uh, similarly, the one at Hilda Ray could definitely use a facelift. So there's these ones that are sort of out of the way that don't fall into, oh, we're on Shoreline Drive, we can do the parking lots at Shoreline Park while we're in the vicinity. So we've put it in our capital program because we also don't want anyone to forget that you actually have to maintain your parking lots. In some cases, we've been very fortunate that they've been ideal locations for the low-impact development, the permeable paver projects. Some of these locations may not be as ideal or um, they haven't fallen into whatever the grant criteria are. So we've always, you know, with working with Creeks Division, it's like what's the best outcome we can have, parking lots next to creeks, parking lots in areas that will have the greatest water quality benefit. Playground replacement program, we're constantly trying to replace playgrounds. Uh, we invested successfully in, in Chase Palm Park this year. We've got Stephen, last year I should say, Stevens Park and a number of other playgrounds this year. Uh, we have Plaza Veracruz, Shoreline Park and Bonnet Park sort of queued up, so to speak, for the first two years. Um, Bonnet Park is a, is a playground that we'll be actually looking for <coughs> uh, community development block grant funding for too. So even though it's identified here, we may try to find another way to fund it. Thousand Steps Renovation, that was the last stop on our site tour and we couldn't go down because the tide was high, but it gives you a sense of the tide was high. Let's see if I can do this again here. And maybe uh, Rich can help me out. So the tide was up here. So as you can see, one of the challenges that we have is that it's within the high tide line. And once upon a time, there was a platform there. And if you look really closely, you can see in this, in this photo, old concrete sort of around, and there's sort of concrete rubble on the beach as well. We have a significant issue with moisture. Um, it's our last beach access that really needs to facelift. We have $200,000 in the budget this year that council approved, so we'll be um, securing an engineering firm to do some preliminary concepts. We'll have to do a coastal hazards wave run-up study analysis. So there's lots of permitting issues. Uh, we would propose that we keep that moving forward. Uh, we have a million dollars for the second year. Frankly, that's probably what it'll take, uh, and that's just assuming it's even feasible um, in our capital program. At some point, they will become... Um, so unsafe that we'll have to close them and we don't want to get to that point. Urban forest management plan, uh, some of our new commissioners um, you know, coming into this late, but we had a plan adopted by the city council last year and it had a lot of things in it that we wanted to do and uh, we didn't get much funding towards implementation, so we put it in the capital program. Priority for us is updating our street tree master plan, which is a huge endeavor. 
uh, developing a park tree master plan, and then beginning to implement some street tree enhancement infrastructure projects, taking parkways and returning them to natural soil and not concrete, finding ways to enhance parkways so that the trees are better sustained and supported. We have an, a myriad of things that we could be doing, and so we're proposing funding for each of those two years. Does, does that um, 150000 cover updating the street tree master plan and developing the park tree master plan to your, I mean, you know, your best guesstimate of? There was, com yeah, and commissioners, I think so. I mean, the cost to develop the urban forest management plan, now that's with some caveats because there'll be work products that'll need to be generated on a neighborhood by neighborhood basis or certain commercial corridors are gonna require additional study, like if you think of the Milpa Street corridor. Uh, with those mature <clears throat> uh, ficus trees. It's not just the trees and planning for the ultimate replanting of that street over time, but the sidewalks, the curbs, the surrounding infrastructure. We would, through the master plan, identify more appropriate tree species and um, minimum parkway sizes and standards for locating trees adjacent to driveways and within distance of, so there'd be certain areas where we would be able to do some of that work as part of the master plan update and some that we would just be more general. So so yes, but it wouldn't mean it would be done, tied in a bow and we'd never have to think about it again. We'd be able to really look at every single block that has a designation and review, is that appropriate? Should it be revised? What should be the long-term plan for it? And then with, with some luck, be able to do some preliminary work to really define what would happen in certain locations. That hasn't been done. Now we know so much more about infrastructure conflict. We've got a mature urban forest. We have species that we should not be planting on city streets anymore. We have a management plan that promotes large canopy trees in open space areas. We have, we have that, but actually turning where, when, and how, and what would they be. Uh, so that essentially um, concludes uh, the staff presentation. Again, what we're asking for you to do today is um, give us feedback on your overall on our overall approach to the six-year program, feedback on the projects that we've proposed for the first two years, and then some sense of what your priorities are. Again, this is going to continue to evolve. You'll have another crack at this, so to speak, when we get into the real budget thing. Budget. Um, uh, development, but it'll give us something to be able to finalize. It it will go to the planning commission as a conceptual document as well in December, and that's the citywide CIP. So we're just one component of the citywide CIP. The city council will take its first look at it in February 2015, and then as you consider the budget and make your recommendations, you'll actually look at it again in April, and, and your recommendations are likely to be in May, and then again, as I mentioned, actual funding allocated in June. So it is October, but it does take eight or nine months to get to a, something. So thank you very much, and if you have any questions. Thank you, Ms. Um, Zachary. That was a great presentation. Okay. Um, I will open it up to the commission, and um, I think probably the best way to do this, if Mr. Heaton doesn't mind, is we're just going to go down the line if that's okay, and ask your questions and give your comments. Is that okay? Yeah, that sounds Great. good. Thank you. Um, thank you for the presentation and um, all of the work and thought put into this. It's obviously um, a great effort, and you've, you've offered us a lot of um, good reasons to be supportive of, of these projects and, and this package. Um, I originally went through and looked at each of them, each of the projects, and had thoughts about them, um, you know, trying to prioritize which, but I think this overall uh, list is, is good. Um, the, like I said, one comment on, on the median and parkway landscape renovation. Um, my first look at that, I was thinking it was something more of replacing, repairing the landscaping, and, and it seems like a... Um, a, a daunting battle in the current climate uh, and and having witnessed 
um, fairly new landscape efforts not succeed or in the process of not succeeding. Um, I, you know, I, I didn't want that necessarily to be a priority right now. But the idea of designing and planning and, and creating um, standards does make sense. And so maybe there would be a way that we could highlight that in the, in the um, support documents or even name. Um, and then there is one project in our sort of long-term planning that um, if, if it makes sense, I would like to see at least explored, uh, and that's the, the skate park um, project. I know it's, uh, you know it hasn't been long probably since it's been a topic on, on the last skate park, but um, really the idea of looking at overall, not just skate, but roller park for entry level and youth um, that complements what we, the, the skate park we have and offers opportunity for, for better use of both um, is something I'd like to see uh, it, at least explored in the exploratory um, phase as, as a project, if not, you know, um, planning for funding in the next couple of years, I'd, it'd be um, nice to have something, you know, similar to what we're doing with maybe off-leash off areas or just kind of trying to identify some, some areas and, and open the discussion on that. Um, if, you know, so that was, that's uh, pretty much my comments for this. Thank you again um, for this. Thank you very much for your comments. Ms. Longstreet. Great presentation. Um, it's always amazing to look at the volume and variety of um, what needs to be done within Parks and Recreation. Um, I think it'll be interesting to explore the off-leash areas and what, what, how that goes, what our concepts are and what can come through in a timely and um, economical fashion because uh, it, I think it is important to a, a segment of our population that uses the parks. Um, or take a park pool renovation. Um, we're a water community, and yet we have no place for young children sw swim lessons other than or take a park. Or for older people to recreate. Um, we keep Los Banos at, you know, a lap swim temperature and we, and it's in a very cold area and having sat through many a summer of swim lessons, they've got to be over five to not turn purple. Um, so it, it always astounds me that um, we don't have better facilities. So I would rate that quite highly in my book to renovate and make sure that we have facilities both for both ends of the spectrum, very young and very old. I know we used to have a pretty robust disability program over there, and I don't know how that, if we have that anymore or whatever, but, uh, and there have been other facilities built, I understand, but um, it just seems that that's an important part of what we should be doing. Um, of course, the, all the park infrastructure safety programs are important. Um, the, the parking lots. I know we look at that little postage stamp of a parking lot in front of the gym, but if you think about it in terms of like what, recharging our groundwater, that's an area that has no, no place to, to have water recharge. Um, it's so paved over that I think we need to look at those opportunities um, not not only for the water cleanliness, but some of um, conservation over the long haul after this drought has made us all aware of that. So um, I think we may be looking in the future to going to as many lots as possible that are permeable. Um, and I think that's, a, I mean, I, I, I want to thank you also for the tour. It was very helpful. Um, thank the, all three of you for um, spending the morning with us and educating us. I, you know, it's been I've been on here years, but I learn something new every time we go out and spend time looking at things, and I really do appreciate it. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for your comments. Uh, we will go to okay, Ms. Brown. Go ahead. <laughs> go for it. Okay. Uh, yes, great, great um, 
presentation. And one of the things I wanted to ask is when you guys are, you're, you're putting all this together, do you, do you prioritize by what are immediate safety issues? Because that's the first thing that sticks out in my mind. Do you? Chair Wiscombe and Commissioner Brown, yes, we do. We, we do two things. We, we know something's needed and we don't have a way to fund it operationally. You know, our operations budgets really are staff and stuff, so to speak. And then those are bigger, bigger picture needs. Um, we can chip away at some of them with some of our discretionary funds on an annual basis, but, but we have issues that become larger and that's where they go into, into the capital program. And when we do that, we also try to be comprehensive about them. When we're just sort of doing things on an ad hoc basis, like dealing with this little bit of sidewalk or that little thing or that thing, we never quite finish anything. So one of our objectives, in addition to you know hazards and safety, is if we go into a park, let's get as much done as we can. So then we don't have to come back here for another 20 years. So it's, it's both of those things. There's some just do it safety issues that of course we take care of because we, we have to. Um, and, and, and then there's the longer range of wow, we really just need to rebuild this because it's not working anymore. Thank you. Um, and you know, because uh, my Boys and Girls Club is over on the east side, the Ortega Park is a big area for so many families over there and the influx of children doesn't seem to stop you know there's babies now and there's just it's such a family oriented area and i can see you know it does get used now but i really think that's a good priority too is just something to fix up the pool and uh, I know we take our kids over there during summer, and it's it's such a great recreational area for the younger kids, especially. But that, and I know a lot of the families um, talk about using that park, and you know, just that that's a real good thing for their family. Um, you mentioned, uh, I think it was Alice Keck Park, that you were looking at outside funding. What kind of outside funding? Chair Wiscombe and, and Commissioner Brown. That that park actually has a, an interesting history in that Santa Barbara Botanic Garden was very much involved in the development of that park. And off and on, we've had conversations with the Botanic Garden, conversations with Santa Barbara Beautiful. Um, we've had different interest groups want to make some sort of investment in the park. We've never had the resources or the time or the, you know, the stars haven't aligned to sort of package it all together. Um, but we feel that there could be sort of both community contributions to improvements at the park, as well as partnerships with other organizations, and then potentially finding some other sort of secure grant sources. What they are, I can't tell you. When when one thing we find is, and one thing we, we do try to do, and you'll see this um, throughout the capital program, is have the city invest up front in defining the project and determining its feasibility and scoping it, and then we can go out and say, we're ready. We know what we want to do, where we want to do it, and why we want to do it. We just need help doing it to actually get it done, and we find that's a, um, a, a good technique. It generates support because they can see that we've thought out what it is that we need to do. Alice, um, that we fondly called Alice, Alice, um, is is near and dear to many different sectors of this community, and so we have certain parts, parks, and facilities in our system that we think are more inclined to generate that kind of community support versus other ones that they just want us to take care of it. Thank you. Um, the other thing is, uh, and thank you. I loved going on the tour. That was incredibly helpful. It really gave me a different perspective. I learned a lot. And, you know, when you were talking about uh, closing the thousand steps, one thing that stood out to me when we did that tour was when we met, we went to McKinley Park, there were some buildings there that were closed down. And then um, there was, you said the, the Carrillo gym roof is closed down. You know, I, I always find that once you start closing things down, you lose so much integrity in that area. And then it's also harder to get it up and running again. And so those are the kind of things I look at as, you know, really trying to have that as a priority is to not close things down. And I know, I know it's all about money, but I, I think, you know, it just kind of makes the area look a little sadder. 
But thank you for everything you've done. You did a great report. Thank you very much. Ms. Clark. Um, I agree with everyone else here. I really appreciate the work that you put into that report. Um, a few things that I thought of while I was reading through it at home. Um, I appreciate the fact that you listened to the community regarding the dog parks and the possibility of adding a skate park and repurposing the first one for advanced skateboarders and possibly bicyclists. Um, and something that kind of goes along with that is you mentioned in here that you are recognizing the changing recreation needs of this community. Um, and in terms of the skate park being repurposed for advanced skaters and bicyclists, I think that's really important. I haven't heard that before in the past. So um, good job on that. I also, along with BB, I really like the fact that you emphasized a warm water pool in the renovation of the aquatic facility. And I, my one concern is I don't know that I saw anywhere else elderly needs addressed in this plan. Um, I'd like to see more of that. I don't know. I don't really have any ideas for that, but I, I did like the warm water pool um, a lot. Like BB said, both, end of the, both ends of the spectrum need addressed. Um, I was intrigued by the ideas of a North State Street or a Central Recreation Center, especially since that's kind of my hood. Um, I'd like to hear more about that. It didn't, I, I know it's just a concept, but that was really intriguing, and I'd like to hear more about that when you get to it. Um, I agree that the Ortega Park is a priority. It's a great after-school destination for the junior high kids and the high, high school kids. Right now, I know a bunch of kids walk, they'll walk downtown after school and just kind of loiter and they go to the rock gym, but not everyone can afford that. So I think that would be an awesome after-school destination. And I know that when my kids swim, they can study afterwards. You know, it really, it's a good workout. So that's a definite priority for that um, community demographic. And my last question was, did you use any of the information from the city conversations on streets, parks, and facilities to work on this plan? Or will those be incorporated in the future? Uh, uh Chair Wiscombe and Commissioner Clark, we haven't sort of been given a compiled outcome of that effort, but certainly uh, that will get integrated in any consideration that our department or anyone in the city has. That's the, the purpose of it is to get a sense from the community, what do you want and how do we get there? Uh, so it just hasn't happened yet, but will it happen? Yes, it will happen. Thank you. Thank you. That, uh, there's actually one more meeting, and that's um, on the 25th, on Saturday, when Open Streets occurs on Cabrillo. So there'll be a meeting, and it's at, is it 2.30 to 3.30, I want to say? I think it's the last, the last of the meeting. So, um, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to make some comments. I wrote some notes down when I reviewed this um, on the six-year plan and then on the two-year plan. Um, I want to thank you all for, I know this is a huge effort to put this together, so thank you all. It's, it's very comprehensive, and I think a lot of thought went into it. It's really clear. Um, the the six-year plan uh, focuses on, obviously, much-needed improvements, but it also focuses on the big picture. And, you know, it's it's looking at high quality facilities that that benefit our community now and for the future um, and examples of the big picture include the new arts and crafts center lower west side neighborhood center um, and aquatic facility just to name a few um, and i think that in order to plan and implement uh, projects that benefit us well into the future, the development of the Parks and Recreation Facilities Master Plan, which is um, here in the two-year plan, um, is, is really essential. Because I think that uh, we really need to be able to respond when opportunities come up. And with that uh, facilities master plan, we would be in a position to better do that. So I think to me that is an absolute top priority because I think there are some opportunities that are going to be coming up. And um, as Ms. Zachary says, we have changing 
uh, recreational needs here in 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 the city, and uh, that plan is going to go a long way towards guiding us to in the right direction when opportunities do come up. And without that plan, it's really hard to respond to, um, you know, the Army Reserve building becoming available or something. You know, it's just. Um, so, and also in the six-year plan, I absolutely support the, um, the ongoing annual programs, um, like the park infrastructure safety program, the irrigation system renovation, the restroom program, uh, playground replacement, and even the new median and parkway landscape renovation program. I think they're all important. Um, and they they allow us to to actually kind of chip away at, at some of the the infrastructure um, deferred maintenance that's occurred over the years um, uh, the backlog that we have in that and um, I think that they're they're really important to to keep going um, so those are my comments there but definitely the um, the Parks and Recreational Facilities Master Plan, I think, is, is, is a real key. Um, my comments on the two-year plan, uh, it, it emphasizes um, upgrades and replacements and not so much the big picture of expansion and new facilities. And I looked at it as organized into kind of three categories, public safety, deferred maintenance, or infrastructure repairs and improvements and neighborhood improvements. Um, and obviously public safety is our number one priority. And so the park infrastructure safety program, the playground replacement program, and the thousand steps renovation um, are, are all projects that in my mind are of the highest priority. Um, I would like, I'd hate to see thousand steps close, but that's, I know we're getting close, so. Um, and uh, a large number of the, the projects in the two-year plan are related to infrastructure improvements. And we have been playing catch up after, you know, the losses in the general fund support that the department uh, incurred during the economic downturn. So I think it's important that we continue to address those infrastructure needs to enhance services. Um, and improve the department's position to respond to recreation demands and needs. Um, and in some cases, and I think this is also important and we need to look at this, as with the Chase Palm Park renovation project and even the Carrillo Ballroom air conditioning project that, gosh, I hope that thing gets funded, these are opportunities that actually can increase our revenues. And um, I think they're important. I think we need to, to really emphasize that um, and think about, about revenue increasing opportunities because um, that will just help the department move forward. Um, and also our historic resources need to be protected and the Carrillo Gym renovation is a great example of that. Um, there's lost opportunities at this facility due to its age and lack of upgrades. So uh, I would personally like to see the off-leash dog area evaluation, at, at least perhaps as Ms. Zachary said, maybe we could start initiating the public discussion in 2016, FY 2016, just because that's, I know, been a community interest for, for so long. And I think, I think it would go a long way towards, um, towards uh, helping the community understand what it takes to, to, to do that evaluation. And, and, but at least they, they understand that, that that's moving forward. Um, and I also believe that the median and parkway landscape renovation funding is, uh, as an ongoing annual program, is essential it, to not only to keep our city looking good, but I think it even helps us make environmentally responsible um, decisions during our drought cycles and beyond that. So. And finally, last but not least, the good old urban forest management plan. So um, I 
would hate. We got fifteen thousand dollars from council for a small implementation of that, which is, um, I think, a public outreach effort. But uh, the update of the street tree master plan, I think, right now is timely and important. Um, the, our trees are some of our most pre precious resources, and, and particularly in light of the drought cycles that we're facing and the infrastructure uh, discussions that are going on, which, which really do relate to our street trees in some locations. I think that the uh, street tree master plan is something that, that um, would go a long way towards benefiting, not only benefiting us with the management of our street trees, but also help us with the management of our infrastructure and, and prioritizing you know, where dollars get spent to make repairs. So um, those are my comments, and thank you again. Yes, Ms. Longstreet. One, one thing I forgot. Um, Chase Palm Park Historic Carousel Acquisition, and it's far out, it's non-essential. I would really like that termed potential acquisition or reuse of the building. Because I think that's definitely one of those things we have to look at a business plan for and whether it makes one whit of sense for us to do it. Um, the time and place for that may not, may have passed, let's put it that way. So um, I, would, I would hope that future commissions and the staff would take a serious look at the, what the uses of that park are right now and um, is the carousel appropriate? Or is that another rental space? A space that more people would use and enjoy. So that's, I just have to say that. Good comment, very good, okay. Um, okay, so I think uh, we've all given comments and I think indicated some priorities for you that will help you, I think, is that, would you? Agree with that, Ms. Zachary? So we, we need to move forward and make a recommendation to, to actually take action and recommendation to move this forward to the um, Planning Commission and the City Council. Is that correct? Correct. Ch Chair Wiscom, a couple of things. What we would like from the Commission is a, just a whatever, however um, you would take action to recommend that, that, that what, we, what we're proposing is essentially on the right track. <laughs> There are nuances, certainly, and that's something that we'll continue to work on as we're putting together our budget proposal for the two-year plan, so we'll look at this again. Uh, so it would be good to have an action from you, to whatever that is related to support for the capital improvement program as proposed with the understanding that it gets refined over time as priorities um, uh, change. As far as your comments are concerned, when we go to council with the CIP, we will be forwarding your comments and your priorities and key considerations that you have, particularly listening to, to what you, you said tonight and what you said at the last meeting is looking at areas where we really need to enhance facilities because they serve children, such as Ortega Park Pool. And we've just, like I said, sort of put it off, and now we're saying, no, maybe it's time to bring that forward. Um, being... Um, more uh, active on looking at off-leash dog areas and other sort of skate park, bike park areas as in sort of new initiatives uh, that we need to start incorporating and making sure that we're allocating for that. And then maintaining the safety, the infrastructure, those types of priorities, uh, and the master plan, I believe. And then um, I, would, I would say, because I think this is ours, you know, we have a number of projects we need to actually do <laughs> And complete in the next, you know, two to three years, and you know that what they are. Um, so that's essentially part of our our work program. Uh, so there's this difference: is that here's the plan, and then well, what are you actually doing? <laughs> so there are things that we're doing, and and just to circle back very briefly, um, I think when we come forward with our matrix of sort of park resources and current park uses, as focused on looking at opportunities for off leash areas. Um, that will generate more of a discussion around, well, if we are going to seriously look at other skate park locations, if it's an area that could be repurposed for dogs, could it also be repurposed for another purpose? 
So I think you'll get into some of that discussion, even though we might not be rolling up our sleeves and drawing up design engineering plans for a new skate park or a new dog park. I think it will take probably, and this is in all honesty, six to 12 months to, to decide where we might have off-leash dog areas because as we prioritize, say we came up with a short list of three to five, well, then that's going to be a discussion for the people that live in those three to five areas. So there's a lot of work that we need to do before we're ready to actually draw up plans for a place. So I would like the commission to have confidence that we know that's a priority and we'll be working on it, whether we actually need additional funds to move the concept forward. We may not need that until until 2017, but as far as our work program is concerned, it's in there. We're already starting on it. Okay. Well, I would you. make a motion um, that we recommend the capital projects priority list for 20, uh, FY 2016 and FY 2017, and that it be forwarded to the Planning Commission and City Council. Do you want to add to that motion the, the um, six-year CIP? Because is the whole six-year CIP? Yeah. Yes. Is, okay. I should have actually asked you that after someone seconded it. But okay. And the CIP. <laughs> the the, the six-year. Yes. Yeah. CIP. Okay. And this, do we have a second? Okay. Ms. Ms. Clark seconded it. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Chair Wiscombe. Yes. If I could just to suggest that you also forward it to City Council. I think I said yeah. Do Planning you, Commission okay. and City Council. Okay. 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 So, city and city council. Yeah. yeah. We have a motion and a second. No further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Carla, did, was there a... No, just Nicole. She needed oh, a second. Oh, yes. Ms. Clark seconded it. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. So that passes unanimously, and uh, we're on our way, I guess. Thank you very much. And since we have no further business, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.